Today we're going to talk about whether Jesus Christ was a socialist. So hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you stay educated on how your money works. As people around the world celebrate Christmas, it's worth remembering that Jesus may have been a socialist. Of course, he was born long before the rise of industrial capitalism in the 19th century, but his radical ideas have influenced many critics of capitalism, including many prominent socialists and even Pope Francis. Pope Francis has consistently criticized the human and spiritual damage caused by global capitalism widening equality and corporate sweatshops. He blamed the god of money for the extremist violence that is taking place around the world. A ruthless global economy, he argued, leads marginalized people to violence. In 2013, he released a remarkable 84-page document in which he attacked unfeathered capitalists as a new tyranny, criticizing the idolatry of money, and urged politicians to guarantee all citizens dignified work, education, and healthcare. He said, Today we also have to say thou shall not to an economy of exclusion and inequality. Such an economy kills. How could it be that it's not a news item when an elderly homeless person dies of exposure, but it's news when the stock market loses two points? In 2016, Americans elected a staunch capitalist, Donald Trump, as president. But a majority of Americans, and even many of those who voted for Trump, even twice, disagree with his policy ideas. Few Americans call themselves socialists, but many of them share socialist critiques of American-style capitalism, including the widening gap between the rich and the rest, the greed of the super-rich, the undue influence of Wall Street and big businesses in politics, and the persistence of widespread poverty and hunger in our affluent society. The idea of Christian socialism has a long and proud tradition. As capitalism emerged in the mid-1800s, many of its fierce critics based their ideas on Jesus' teachings. No one can serve two masters, Jesus says in Matthew 6, 24. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. In Luke 12, 15, Jesus says, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Jesus not only urged people to be kind to others in their everyday lives, he was also talking about those in government who ruled over others, including the priests who ruled Judea for Rome and the rulers of the Roman Empire. Pope Leo XIII, often called the Worker's Pope, echoed similar ideas. His 1891 On the Condition of Labor focused attention on the dehumanizing conditions in which many workers labored. He affirmed workers' rights to just wages, rest, and fair treatment to form unions and to strike if necessary. He called on governments to promote an equal distribution of resources and said in particular that the poor have a claim to special considerations. He did not espouse socialism, but his attacks on capitalism for its endorsement of greed, its concentration of wealth, and its mistreatment of workers had a major influence on the emerging socialist movement in Europe and in the US. Francis Bellamy, an American Baptist minister, was a leading Christian socialist. Like Pope Leo, he championed the rights of working people and a more equal distribution of wealth and income, which he believed reflected Jesus' teachings. In 1891, Bellamy was fired from his Boston pulpit for preaching against the evils of capitalism and describing Jesus as a socialist. But he's best known as the author of the Pledge of Allegiance, which he wrote in 1892 as an antidote to Gilded Age greed, misguided materialism, and hyper-individualism reflected in those radical words with liberty and justice for all. Many of America's leading socialists rooted their views in their Christian faith, which became known as social gospel. Many of the leaders of America's socialist movement include Norman Thomas, who ran for president five times on the Socialist Party ticket and was often called America's Conscience. Throughout American history, some of the nation's most influential activists and thinkers, such as John Dewey, W.E.B. Du Bois, Albert Einstein, Gloria Steinman, Margaret Sanger, and Dorothy Day, embraced democratic socialism. In the early 1900s, socialists led the movement for women's suffrage, child labor laws, consumer protection laws, and the progressive income tax. In 1911, Victor Berger, a socialist congressman from Milwaukee, sponsored the first bill to create old age pensions. The bill didn't get too far, but two decades later, President Franklin D. Roosevelt persuaded Congress to enact social security. Even then, some critics denounced it as un-American. But today, most Americans, even conservatives, believe that social security is a good idea. What had once seemed a radical thing has become commonplace. Much of FDR's other New Deal legislation, the minimum wage, workers' right to form unions, and public works programs to create jobs for the unemployed, was first espoused by American socialists. Socialists had long pushed for a universal health insurance plan which helped create the momentum for stepping stone measures such as Medicare and Medicaid in the 1960s. Socialists were in the forefront of the civil rights movement from the foundings of the NAACP in 1909 through the Voting Rights Act of 1965. 
Martin Luther King Jr. believed that America needed a radical distribution of economic and political power. In October 1964, he called for a gigantic Marshall Plan for the poor, black, and white. Later that year, after he traveled to Oslo to accept the Nobel Peace Prize, he told friends that the U.S. could learn much from Scandinavian democratic socialism. In fact, he told his staff there must be a better distribution of wealth and maybe America must move towards a democratic socialism. A poll in 2016 found that among Americans under 50, a majority are critical of capitalism. Although the word socialism has often been demonized, public opinion polls show that the vast majority of Americans agree with these ideas. For example, 74% think corporations have too much influence, 73% favor tougher regulation on Wall Street, 60% believe that our economic system unfairly favors the wealthy, 85% want an overhaul of our campaign finance system to reduce the influence of money in politics, 79% think the wealthy don't pay their fair share of taxes, 85% favor paid family leave, 80% of Democrats and half the public support single-payer Medicare for all, while 63% favor a $15 minimum wage. Well over 70% support workers' right to unionize, and 92% want a society with far less income disparity. So what are your thoughts? Is the teachings of Jesus that of socialism, or am I wrong and he's been a staunch capitalist this whole time? Leave a comment down below and let's get a discussion started. And as always, take care of your money. Today's book of the day is COVID-19 The Great Reset by Klaus Schwab. I'll leave a link to the book down below, and if you prefer listening to it on an audiobook for free, I'll also leave a link to a 30-day free trial to Audible. You can choose this book or any book to listen to, and even if you cancel before your free trial is over, you can still keep the book and listen to it whenever you want. 